Saturday and take a thought for the message this evening. Colossians chapter number 3, and we'll be in verse number 18, just read down through a few verses as we did on uh, Sunday, just to get our uh, minds back to where we were the other day. So if you find your place, let's go ahead and stand together, old cannon wheel. Colossians chapter number 3 this evening, Colossians chapter 3, and verse number 18, wives, submit yourselves unto your husbands as it is fit in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives. And be not bitter against them. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily. As to the Lord and not unto men. You can be seated uh, this evening. Thank you so much for standing. As we get back into this message, I want us to remember a little bit about where we were on Sunday. Sunday morning, uh, the 10 o'clock service, we picked up and started this message. And we started talking about doing things heartily. Doing them heartily, which means giving more to what the Lord would have for you to do. And we, we posed the question... Uh, do we want to do more in 2024? And and I would hope that there would be a resounding yes. I want to do more. I want to be more excited about being at church. I want to be more excited about serving God. I want to be uh, more excited about the things of God. And, and, and I want people to be able to see that. Remember we were talking about a witness? We were talking about how we want people to be able to see that on our faces. And you know, this right here means a whole lot more than this right here. I'm excited about serving God. I really am. Can I invite you to church? Nope. <laughs> Please don't. Right? And it's, it's unfortunate in the day that we're living in, Brother Matt, that we have so many Christians that are upset about being saved. They're upset about serving God. And you say, oh, there's no way they are. Their proof is in their face. If they're upset about it. And so we got to be better witnesses whenever we should pray. Lord, help me to be a better witness. Lord, help me with my prayer life. Those are standard things that we pray as we looked at the other day. I want to pray more. I want to study more. I want to read more. I want to witness more. I want to rejoice more. Remember, we talked about all those things. So as we get back into it this evening, let's look here. And uh, we'll be back around the Bible a little bit more uh, like we were on Sunday. But our our goal should be doing more in 2024. I want to do more. I'm not, I hope you're not content with where you finished 2023. Because right. I can promise you this. Nobody's content in their financial life. Right. Nobody's content in their business. Right. We always want it to do more. We always want it to grow. We always want more, more, more. But the spiritual things, Brother Mike Brown, tend to, I'll be okay without those. Yeah. As I told you the other day, the older I get, the less business, the less money, less all that stuff means to me. It really doesn't mean a whole lot to me. Um, I've gotten to the point where I really, Brother Matt, just don't care. Um, i got enough to eat. God's promised that. I'll work. I'll make I'll make money, but as far as going out and killing myself so that uh, it's just not going to happen. I, it, it, the, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate that so many Christians are ruled by that dollar bill You're right. and not by the Bible. You're right. And you can say, oh, what do you know about that? I know a lot about it. I walked away from God for seven years because of a dollar bill. Made more money than I'd ever made in my life. Never once prospered. I know more than you might think about walking away from God over a dollar bill. Now, I want to do more for Him, yeah. not gain more for me. 
All right, we started looking at that the other day. Let's let's get back into it, and uh, we, we won't do a whole lot. We won't pretty much do any review. We'll just jump right into where we're at for this evening. All right, Brother Mike Brown, how about you pray for us before we preach? Yes, Father, thank you, Lord, for this evening. We thank you, Lord, for going this path. And we was able to get out of the Lord. And Father, we just pray now. As the pastor brings forth what you have placed upon his heart, Lord, that you just give him wisdom and the that we be healed for this Lord, and just give us a high position. Amen. We started talking the other uh, day on Sunday morning. First message I preached on this, we talked about having spiritual goals. And, and, and I hope that after that, those messages on, on Sunday, I, I, prayerfully we went back to our prayer closet, went back to our prayer list, went back to our, our, our study notes and things of that nature and started Brother Swope looking at it and saying, you know what? I can do better here. I want to do better here. I want to set better uh, spiritual goals. I just don't want the status. I, I just want to be able to, 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 to pray and I want to read through my Bible this year. That's great. And I, I told y'all that's fantastic to read through your Bible. But man, don't, I'd much rather you read for understanding right. than I would say, oh, well, I read my three chapters today. Whoopity do if you didn't get nothing out of it, right? right? We want to make sure that we're, Lord, help me in my understanding because we're not going to grow and get closer to God if we don't do that. We have personal, physical, spiritual, family and relational goals, but it seems spiritual goals are the ones that always tend to take a back seat. We talk about giving more of me for him. And, and, and I hope we take that serious that yes, should we pray that I, I want to, I, I want to pray more? Yes, I do. And I believe that's something you pray. God, help me, help me to carve out time for that. Now be careful because he will. Be real careful if you say, Lord, help me carve out time that I can, I can do this because he's going to say, okay. That TV show that you're always watching first thing in the morning, that, that those reels that you're always watching or those videos you're always thumbing through, I want those and spend that time with me. So be real careful whenever we start praying that I want to pray more, I want to witness more, I want to study more, I want to rejoice more, right? Then we get in here this evening and I want you to go to Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles 29-28. All these things are things that we should pray for. But I hope these aren't things that we just flippantly pray for. Well, I've always prayed for that, so this is just standard in my, in my list. That's what I want to pray for. I hope we are serious. And Lord, I do want to rejoice more in you and who you are. Lord, I do want to read more. Help me, God, to have a better understanding of your word. I have, over the course of the last uh, week, week and a half or so, since preparing and, and working on this message, God's really tested my temperature on these things. And um, he's tested me, all right, big boy, you're going to live what you preach. And so I've had to consciously stop what I'm doing and go to reading. Or go to praying, or go to doing things of that nature. I instead of picking up first thing in the morning, picking up checking my emails and checking things of that nature. That stuff sits. First thing I grab is my Bible. God checked my temperature on it and said, "All right, let's see what you got." Now, am I saying that I'm going to do that tomorrow morning? That's my goal. It's my goal tomorrow morning. But if I don't do it tomorrow morning, brother Matt, I'm not going to quit. I'm going to get back at it on Friday morning, right? So many times we get discouraged because, well, I failed here. Yeah, we always do. Have you ever messed up on your job? Anybody ever messed up? Miss Jossie, I know that you used to, you, you pretty much wrote the program over there. You're right over there at uh, Camp Bello. How to do, do you ever mess up, your, get fumbled on your words ever? You ever get messed up? Time or two, just once. Let's just go with once. Did you quit? And say, I can't do this no more? No, of course not. Brother Mike, you probably never messed up a deer head or never messed nothing. I'm sure you never messed anything up in your life. <laughs> but obviously you didn't quit. You're still after it. 
right? You know what? I've messed up serving God. I've messed up re, you know, not doing the things I told God I was going to do. Why is it that we didn't quit our job? We didn't quit our job. We don't quit these things. We don't quit that thing. But we'll quit God real quick whenever we feel like, oh, well, I've done Him wrong. You know, whenever you, whenever you failed, you didn't surprise Him none. He knew it was going to happen. So just say, Lord, I'm sorry. And you know, I'm sorry is a good Christian character thing to say. Amen. It's something good to say. Say, oh, well, you know, Lord, I'm sorry. You know what I'm sorry means? You're right. I may not like it. I may not agree with it. But who's going to argue with him? You're right. I'm sorry. You're right. Amen. But we won't even do that to the Lord. Brother Matt, it's almost like, it's almost like repentance is out of our, it's getting out of our society. I'm never wrong. Miss Shelby. I don't know if you believe this or not, but you've probably been wrong a time or two. Sweetheart, I love you, but you ain't always right. Miss <laughs> Nicole, you ain't always right. Right? So who knows it best? And God. So Brother Reggie, when things ain't right, when I bump my nose, skin my nose up, Best thing to do is just hit my knees and say, Lord, you know what? You're right. I'm sorry. Has anybody ever said I'm sorry before? Hey, do this. You're still breathing, right? Everything's still good? See, it didn't kill you that time. It ain't going to kill you that. All right? But we got to understand that we've got to obey what the Lord would have for us to do and walk in His ways. Okay? So, let's keep moving forward here, all right? Are you there in Second Chronicles 29, 28? I don't think we ever read that, did we? Boy, I got sidetracked there. I saw a rabbit run back there. Bob kicked it and he jumped back out there on the, on the rail again. So we, we plucked him real good. Second Chronicles 29, 28. Bible says, and all the congregation did what? All the congregation worshipped. Did it say this side worshipped? Did it say that side? Did it say the young people worship? Did it say the old people worship? What did it say, Brother Mike Brown? All the people worship. But notice, when did they worship? Look at what it says. And the singers sang. Were they worshiping during music? And the trumpeters sounded. Or trumpeters, sorry. Trumpeters sounded. And all this continued until the burnt offering was finished. Now, I want you to understand. Everybody, everybody okay? Buckle up right here. You ready? I'm going to blow your mind. It's okay to worship in a Baptist church. Yes, it is. Here, the Bible says, all the congregation worship. See, here's what's happened in, 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 in our fundamental Baptist churches. Here's what's happened. We've gotten so stiff and so starchy that we can't even worship. We've gotten so, hmm, I don't know about that because, boy, that contemporary crowd, they they call it praise and worship. They're taking our words. No, worship's a biblical word. Right. Worship's a Bible word. And if you don't have any confidence in them, why are you letting them out worship you? Let that baby sink in for a minute. We'll come back to it. Just pull it out and stick it behind your ear. You'll need to chew on that a little bit later. But we can worship. Here we see it's done during songs. Brother Swope up here leading music. Brother JB up here leading music. That's a time of worship. Y'all yeah. realize that a song, the song service is what sets the tone for preaching? Amen. Amen. If while they're up here leading music, I've led music a long time. I've seen many congregations, many people looking back at me. 
If while someone's up here leading music, trying to get the congregation in a spirit of worship so that we can get into the, get into the, the Word of God and have the right mentality for, for receiving preaching and we're more interested in playing around or looking for something or talking or, or getting this or doing that. Listen, that's not the time. It's not the time. Listen, if, if, if little Johnny's got to go to the bathroom, take little Johnny before 11 o'clock. Take a little Johnny before 5 o'clock. Take a little Johnny before 6.30. Let's go get that done because I'm going to be in here so I can worship with everybody else during the songs. That's a time of worship. Listen, I can tell you from personal experience here, when the song service is meh, the whole service is meh, I've led congregations before, and I mean, how can you how can you sing "Amazing Grace" like your cat died? Not like a dying cat, but like your cat died. <laughs> if you sing like a dying cat, praise the Lord for you. But, the Lord, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, Amen. But I mean, I, I've literally seen people sing in this church, in this congregation, "Amazing Grace." Like you didn't know nothing about it. Now, if you just got bad news before you walked in the door, I get it. You know, it, it's hard whenever you're that far burnt. I get it. I get it. But man, that's not all of us. And that sets the tone for the service. Now, I'm going to tell you, I've preached services here that the message wasn't even no good but the hearts were right in the pews or the chairs. And it began in worshiping during singing. And we come in ready to work. Brethren, we have met to worship. And we had come in that night. And I, I'm honest, I'll be honest, completely honest with you. I've come in here before and I thought, I don't know how this message is going to go. I really don't. I, it seems like it's just, I'm just going to be reading stuff off and I'm going to get a little preach here and there. And I, I don't, I don't know how this, it'd be a dynamic service. I mean, just out the top service. Now I come in here before and I'm like, man, I'm so excited to preach. I just can't stand myself. We've had great services with those too. But then I've had some that I'm like, how in the world did that flop? And I pray and I trace it back, Brother Swope, and we weren't ready to worship. We, I'm not saying you weren't ready, you blew it. And that's not what I'm saying tonight. We weren't ready to worship. So this was done during Psalm, right? Said it was done during Psalm. Look with me in the 95th Psalm. The 95th Psalm in verse number six. So it's all that worship should, that's setting the tone for service. The worship, the, the singing of songs, singing uh, these songs unto the Lord, and that's worshiping Him. Psalm 95, 6, the Bible says, Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. Have you ever thought about that? Praise is more audible. Praise is something, Brother Mike Brown. And praise the Lord. Woo! Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. That's, that's praising the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. <clears throat> Worship? They did bowing down. They got down on an altar somewhere. They bowed down before the Lord and worshipped Him. Can I ask you this? This, this, isn't, this is personal. For you. When was the last time you truly just worshipped God? I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about run the aisle, shout, and jump through a window. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about when was the last time you just got to worshiping God? His presence was so real to you that you was just beside yourself. That his what he had done for you was just so real. 
that you just you just could not you couldn't put it into words. It was just thank you, Lord, and worshiping. I want to worship more in twenty four. I do. I do. I want to worship Him more than I ever have before. And the year started out great, Miss Candy. Now, that's not to say that tomorrow morning I won't get up and my world fall apart. It could. But I hope, Brother Mike Brown, even if my world falls apart in the morning, that I can still worship Him in the afternoon. That's good. good. Amen. That's Amen. Good. You know why I want to worship him? Go to go to John chapter four, verse twenty-three. I want to show you why I want to worship him. John chapter four. John four. I want to use a lot of Bible because I believe the Bible is what it's going to be to help us. Amen. John chapter 4, verse number 23. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Watch this now. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Verse 23, the last part says, For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. You know, He desires our worship. He desires it. He looks for it. It's pleasing to Him when we worship Him. Very pleasing to the Lord. The Father seeks those that worship Him. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 6, give you another point. Will we worship Him more in 2024? I sure hope so. I hope we have a desire to know that He seeks those that worship Him. He desires that. We can, he, we can worship Him in song. We can worship Him at a bowed knee. That's His desire for us that we worship. Think about what He's done for us. Brother Matt, all He did was save you. That's all He did. All He did was forgive you for everything that you ever done or was going to do sinfully. That's all he ever did. All he did was took your sin on him and hung on a cross and took all that penalty of your sin on his back. That's all he did. I mean, let's just throw heaven in there as a perk. Amen? That's what it is. Give you eternal life with him, worshiping him in heaven. Why would we not want to get started here? Amen? Why would we not want to get started here and worship him a little bit here? Amen? 2 Corinthians 9, 6. Are you there? 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 6. Let me ask this question. Will we give more in 2024? Don't leave yet. 2 Corinthians 9, 6. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth the cheerful giver. And in parentheses you can write there, and hateth the tightwad. <laughs> Verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. As it is written, He hath dispersed abroad, He hath given to the poor, His righteousness remaineth forever. Now he that ministereth seed, uh, ministereth seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Look in verse 11. Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causeth through us thanksgiving to God. Let me say this about this verse. There's more here in those verses 
than just money. Amen. Well, I tithe. You've done the minimum. Good job. Amen. All right. I, I, I've heard somebody say, well, I'm not going out passing out tracks. I'm not knocking on doors. I'm not doing none of this stuff here because I give my 10%. You've not even done right by God yet if all you're doing is 10%. That's exactly right. Tithe and an oh, offering. Yes. Amen. Amen. And you can either be a, a tip, a tither, or a thief. A tipper, a tither, or a thief. Amen. What are we going to be? But there's more here than just money. Listen, will we give more financially to the work of the Lord to see people saved and buildings built so that they can hear the word of God? Will we give more? I'm not, I, I'm not, I had a man tell me one time when I was on deputation, he looked at me, he was preaching and he stopped and he said, Brother Bo, I'm not a missionary. I don't know how to beg for money. And I thought, oh man, I'd like to step up there and wring your jaws. I don't know how to beg for money. If God can't get it out of your grip, Brother Danny, I sure can't. But that's what that's what we have to understand is it's not something he loves a cheerful giver, not grudgingly, nor out of necessity. Not, well, I guess, I guess I'd better give this, get preacher, stop preaching on it. No, give out of the abundance of your heart. Give because you want to. Give because it is joy. Listen, when I get my report card in January, y'all know what those are? Brother Reggie's got them out to you already, right? Those report cards? Yeah. When I get that, I'm happy whenever I can see what I gave exceeded what I've done in years past. I love it. You can say, oh, well, you're just, nope. I pray God enlarge it. Enlarge it. How's he going to do that? I don't even have to live on less because God can. Amen. Amen. You say, how in the world are you going to say that? Listen, I can't explain it, Brother Matt, but these times that God's told me give this, I've give that, and then I got a credit on my power bill. Why do they give credits on power bills? They don't. But God does. Amen. I've given before. I've put it in the box. I've put it in the plate. And then I'm like, I don't know how in the world I'm getting groceries. I get home and there's groceries at the door. I can't explain it. I can. I lied. God. God. Right? But this is more than just financial. This is more. I know everybody wants to go to financial when you start talking about giving. Oh, I don't want to give no more. Don't you know? I got this going on. That We all got things going on. Amen. But God can meet your need. All right? Will we give more financially? That will be a goal we pray for. And not just a <laughs> fly by. Yeah, Lord, let me give. Okay. But I want to give more, Brother Matt, not only financially, but I want to give more time. I will, will we give more time to go tell them of the Savior that came to die for them? Will we carve that time out? You know, we, we've said this a million times since being here. Planning our day. Man, don't live by the seat of your britches. Don't live by the seat of your pants. I mean, I, I've lived that way. I know you can and I, it, it's great. But man, if you'll plan, plan your work and work your plan. Anybody ever heard that? Yeah, I used to get told that all the time. Plan your work, work your plan, and everything will fall right into place, right? Business-wise, that's a good plan. You know, spiritually wise, that's a good plan as well. If you make a date that you're going to do X, Y, and Z, then no matter what happens, Brother Matt, do X, Y, and Z. <clears throat> Has anybody else noticed that it's always when you've got something to do with the Lord, something to do with your Bible, something to do with church. That's when everything starts falling apart. People ain't going to stop by your house until Sunday morning. Sunday afternoon, they'll stop by your house and want to talk. You ain't going to get a phone call during the week. You'll get it on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Anything gets in the way, and here's the problem that we run into, Brother Mike Brown. We let it. Absolutely. We let it. 
I won't get a phone call all day long. But you let me sit down with my Bible in the middle of the day. Miss Johnson, you let me start reading. Let me really get engulfed in something. And Brother Bob hits phone call after phone call after text after this. It never fails. I'll really get going good with a message. And I'll get to type and I'll just... Y'all got to hear me type. It's about like that, ain't it, baby? <laughs> Real loud. She runs me out. But I'll be typing away. And I'm just going, man, Just it's just jumping. Boom, 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 boom. And what do I get? Hey, Dad! I'm like, what? That's why I wear noise-canceling headphones and earbuds and stuff. Because I got, I got to. If I don't, I'll be distracted all day. Am I the only one? Did that happen to anybody else? Anybody else ever get to praying and get to thinking about everything but what you're praying about? Amen. Anybody have trouble sleeping at night? Pray, you'll go to sleep. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's what you used to tell kids at youth camp. I can't go to sleep. Brother Bo, I can't go to sleep. I said, start praying. What? Yeah, start praying. You'll be asleep in no time. Amen. Any of y'all that's been to youth camp with me, y'all have heard that. <laughs> go to sleep. Whatever. Listen, I want to give more of me. I want to give more time. Give more time to the Lord. It's only going to happen, Brother Matt, by carving that out. Will we give more of self up? That we can be fervent in our prayers, we got to give self up to do that. Can we give more in time of study? we got to give self up to do that. Can we truly allow Him to guide our lives. We've got to give self up to do that. Because listen, your flesh does not want to sit down and read this. Your flesh does not. Your flesh is lost. Your flesh is nasty. Your flesh is sinful. God saved your soul, not your flesh. And I about hit you with my ribbon. Tuck that in. Your flesh does not want to pray in the morning. Y'all ain't got to answer this. I know the answer. But if you pray in the morning, you've fallen asleep while you've been praying. Why? The Spirit is indeed willing, the Lord said, but flesh is weak. Man, are we going to give up ourself? Give up self. Listen, this evening, there is a Carolina Tar Heel basketball game on. Hallelujah. As long as they beat the Blue Devils, it's okay. I ain't Christian to pull for the devil. Never mind. But I want to go home and watch that. I want to go home. No, they're playing state tonight, yes. But I want to go home and watch that. If I've not spent time with the Lord today, outside of just being here, this is the extra. This is a perk. If I've not spent time with the Lord, Brother Mike, do I got any business going home watching that ball game? You say, well, no, pastor. You ought to have spent time. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't no pastor me. Why, Christian? No, Christian. You ain't got no business neither. Christian, why, why, why am I held to a higher standard? Yes, I know I am. And I know that's just the nature of it, and I'm cool with that. But Brother Matt, nowhere in this book am I held to a higher standard to study, pray, and read. I'm not. I'm not the only one that it says, Brother Swope, to go witness. I'm not the only one that says rejoice. I'm not the only one the Bible says to worship. We're all to, right? And so that's why this message is so relevant for where we're at today. You see, this new year should be a year of cheerful giving. Think about that for a moment. Cheerful giving. Not only money. But I want to give, be a cheerful giver in my money. I want to be a cheerful giver in my time. And I want to be a cheerful giver of self this next year. All around, we should be thankful for what the Lord has done for us and provided for us and give out of, we said a moment ago, the abundance of our hearts. How far, think about this, how far do we want this church to go? We have different time frames of people that have been here. Got a group that's been here since the beginning. 
got a group that's been here since I've been here. And I hope you're not just happy now, as we've talked about before, well, we got a pastor. Right. I hope you're excited to see, and I know you are, that you used to have a baker's dozen. And now we pull out chairs on Sundays. Mm-hmm. Amen. 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 we got to buy more chairs because I don't want to put people in, in, in metal chairs. I hope you're excited about that. The group that started coming in and, and started coming in throughout the time that I've been here and, and getting involved, I hope you're not just happy saying, well, I've got somewhere to go. No, I hope we're all striving to see more come. Striving to have more, not just our families. I know people will say, well, I just want my, 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 my daughter to come. I want my aunt to come. I want, my, I want them to come too. But I want your neighbor to come. Yeah. Amen. I want your friend. Listen, maybe Brother Mike Brown, God won't do something with our children until we stop worrying about my four and no more and we start going to highways and the hedges and compelling them to come. Then we start seeing God work in our families. So we got to be a cheerful giver. It takes us all giving more financially, time, and more self. Amen? Amen. So that's more of me for him. All that in three messages. We preached one point. More of me for him. Now we're going to stop there because I don't want to jump into this. But I'll give you just a little commercial for where we'll be Sunday morning. Unless the Lord decides to do something different, we'll be here Sunday night. But in 2024, I want to be more like Jesus for others. I want to be more like Him, Brother Matt, for others. So let's pray. Ask God to uh, give us a good, safe week and bring us back on Sunday. Take these few 